Good morning once again, everyone. If you were with us for breakfast, we really appreciate the fact that you were able to get here for that and spend some time with us. Um, I'm Dr. Rykowski. I'm the principal here at Egan, and I give you my heartiest welcome, as well as thanking all of you for the service that you or someone in your family has given and is giving. We so appreciate it. Um, I know that you saw a lot of photos of people that were shared by our faculty and staff and even our students, and you know that we, um, every year, really look forward to this event. So last year we were totally virtual because the students weren't even in school. Um, remember we went into total lockdown for a few months and then came back? Uh, so it was great this year to be able to plan something in person. Our students, faculty, and staff are largely watching from their pause homerooms. They will be seeing what you will be seeing on the side screens. So welcome to all of our students, faculty, and staff who are watching from afar. We wish we could all be together, but we're sort of taking steps at a time here to stay safe. We are going to enjoy celebrating with you this morning. I want to mention that we have uh, several people here representing District 196 who are happy to be here too. I'll ask them to stand, Superintendent Mary Krieger and Director of Secondary Education, Michael Bolsoni. Thank you for being here. I'm going to welcome now Mr. Paul Kovac, who will be our MC for the program, and he will take it from here. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, Dr. Rykowski. Good morning, my name is Paul Kovac. I am a Marine and a teacher here at Egan High School. Today's assembly will be available for viewing on the front page of the Egan High School website. Before we start, I have to say thank you to all our veterans and their family members for being here. Thank you for being so flexible. And I know part of being in the military, part of being a veteran is being flexible always, especially family members of those in the military. So thank you. And to all our students in their pause rooms, thank you for being a respectful audience for today's assembly. And last, I would be remiss not to say happy birthday to every Marine out there today. Today today's the Marine Corps birthday, Devil Dogs. 246 years old. All right. Audience, I respectfully ask that you all stand now. And veterans, you may keep your covers on and salute or take them off and put them over your heart. As members of the Daniel R. Olson Legion Post 594 Color Guard, Post Colors, please remain standing for the Star Spangled Banner and the Pledge of Allegiance. Members of the Egan High School Vocal Jazz Group, Be Natural, under the direction of Mr. Jim Cox, will now sing the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars Oh, say does that song 
would be natural. I would now like to introduce Ms. Erin Murphy, a Marine Corps veteran and Egan High School English teacher to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Please be seated, audience. I would like to welcome Ms. Amanda Adams, Egan High School Social Studies teacher and the wife of a veteran. Ms. Adams. Good morning, everyone. Whether you're joining us in person, at home, or in the wilds of your classroom here at Egan High School, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is so good to see people gathered here in this variety of ways to celebrate not only our veterans and their families, but our community. Every year, our celebration at Egan High School has had a similar format, but different speakers, different music, maybe a few different faces in the crowd. Based on what we've needed, we've invited a variety of different and impactful speakers to come and share their insight with you. There is student participation with music, decoration, and a breakfast, a slideshow of veterans connected to people here at Egan High School, music, merriment, and usually 2,000 plus students in the gym to share the experience together. And so over the past dozen plus years, Egan has come up with a winning combination. So much so that schools in our district and outside of it wanted to know what we did and how we prepared. As Mr. Kovach had said, anyone familiar with the military understands the need to monitor and adjust and be flexible. And so last year happened and things were different and weird and we monitored and adjusted. And this year, as we sat around deciding what we were going to do, what we could do, should we do this, part of our conversation came down to the event that we create is about community, it's about our community, it's about our students, it's about the members uh, of our community here at Egan. And as a history teacher, I'm always aware of the importance of context and understanding why we do certain things. And this event is meaningful because of all of you and the camaraderie ship that we share and the jokes and the conversations that we share at breakfast and when you come in and see each other in this space. And some of you may not know, because maybe this is your first time here at our event, or maybe this is your first time here at EHS, uh, there are many people that come to this event every year, every single year. And two of these people are here with us today. Um, Gwen and Wayne Olson have never missed an event. And as I thought about this opportunity that brought uh, these two individuals to share their story with us. I am grateful to be able to be here and talk just a little bit of what I know of Gwen and Wayne. I wanna offer you a little bit of context on what these amazing people and their family has done to create community. From a devastating experience and the most devastating loss that a parent can experience, they brought their love of their son and their love of their community to each and every one of us to share. Daniel Olson was an Egan graduate. He and his sisters are part of the Egan community. The Olsons are our neighbors, our friends, and an example of resilience and grace. And many of you may not know them. Their family has taken loss and grief and shared them with us. 
This is a sacred privilege that we have. You see, Gwen and Wayne and their family are connected with a group of individuals known as Gold Star families. And there are a number of them in our neighborhoods and in our communities. These families gather, most of them local, in this opportunity, and they processed and turned the celebration of their loved ones into a variety of opportunities of which we benefit from. The Olson family has shared themselves and their stories and those of a handful of others and created community events like Scoops for Troops, which is a community event that raises money for the Fallen Heroes Fund through an organization called Tribute to the Troops, of which Gwen and Wayne are involved in. Another local event that the Olsons are very much involved with is the Warrior 196 5K, which happens every year and raises money for scholarships for students in the district. So I can't imagine another opportunity or space where families continue to do so much for the communities that they're a part of. And it is this engagement that makes it such a privilege to be able to introduce them to you here today. Through all of their work, the Olsons have continued to connect the love of their son and their family to us. Their love and their faith has made them a shining example of what community is, and we're blessed to have them. So this year, in all of the spaces that we're inhabiting right now, we get to hear from them in their own words, talk about their experiences and their son. It is my pleasure to introduce Gwen and Wayne Olson. Good morning. My name is Olivia Hopewell, and today I have the privilege of meeting with Wayne and Gwen Olson, parents of Daniel Olson, who is class of 2005. He was killed in action in Iraq on April 2nd, 2007. Thank you so much for joining us, and we are here to talk about how much Daniel has made an impact here on Egan High School. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. Could you tell us a little bit about how, uh, how Daniel grew up and what his experience at Egan High School was like? True personality traits I think of that were true his whole life is he was very introverted and he always liked to belong to something bigger than himself but blend in. Um, he really kind of was a typical little boy. He liked playing with Legos and trucks and teasing his sisters. He was good at Anything with numbers, um, he would, uh, but he, he would play with um, pretty much anything. He would participate in uh, soccer and, you know, typical, typical sports. Um, At Egan High School, what activities did he get involved with? I know you mentioned band and soccer. Yeah, um, as far as high school, he was part of the drum line. Um, I was a good big group he could blend in, um, but he probably, high school he more liked his job. He worked at um, Camp Snoopy in the Mall of America. He was park maintenance and a ride operator. And the other thing he did a lot of during those years was he volunteered in the children's program um, at church. And those two things he would do, even when he was home on leave, right up to pre-deployment leave. He, he spent more time working and at the Mall of America, and he'd even, on, he'd surprise the kids from the Sunday school, like oh. show up at their games. And later we'd hear stories how he'd go to their elementary schools and have lunch with them. Oh, that's or, um, He'd go school shopping with their families, and we didn't know, we didn't know he did these things. We just knew he wasn't coming home <laughs> all day Sunday. He was a very caring individual. He would help out any neighbors that asked for help with anything um, or friends. That is so beautiful mm -hmm. to hear. Would you be able to tell us why he decided to join the Marines and what? jobs or role was he assigned while he was there? Uh, probably 9-11 happened a few years before. Yep. He, and I don't think he was ready to think about college. He was familiar with uh, uh, our family military experience. I'm a vet. Um, 
of my nine uncles, uh, several would serve in the uh, World War II uh, wow. domain. I have cousins, well, all of those families had anywhere from one to eight kids, and so lots of cousins, several of the cousins were in Vietnam. So Daniel would be familiar with that history. Uh, my dad was, was a vet, Gwen's dad was a vet, uh, her uncle was a vet, my brother was a vet. So, so a very strong military background. And it's just that, that same kind of theme again of being part of something meaningful, um, that you could just kind of blend in and but still belong. And... So he joined the Marines and he was a uh, infantry saw gunner. Um, and uh, he left for boot camp on 9-11, 2005. Um, and would spend, what, a year, year or two uh, before being deployed. Would you be able to give any advice to other families that went through a loss of a child? Well, for our family, it was absolutely faith that got us through and knowing that, that Daniel was really leaning into his faith. He had asked us to send him a cross, which he was wearing at the time he was killed. He also carried a coin in his pocket that said something like, Lord, nothing's going to happen to us today that you and I can't handle. I'm going to cry Ugh. together. Um, yeah. and, and any letters he sent, any letters we're aware of he sent, he would end with the reference to Psalm 23, 4, you know, where I walk through the valley of the shadow um, of death. Um, I just... We know where he is, um, and we know we'll see him again. But other practical things for families going through the loss of a child, um, there's actually quite a lot. There's, there's more of that than you know about, and I would seek out the support groups and the other families going through the same journey because they're really the ones that are going to understand. Instead of just going through the rest of your life thinking of the loss, carry forward all those good days you had them, um, and cherish your family members, your other kids that you still have. Um, and imagine, uh, I would imagine what Daniel would want us to do uh, going forward. He wouldn't, he wouldn't want us to be going in some negative direction, but carrying on the things that he was interested. Um, Daniel has impacted a lot of people throughout his community. Um, can you share your thoughts on, on his impact? That just kind of astounds me to think about because of how he had mastered blending <laughs> in. But, but boy, we've been the recipients of the community's caring since, since the day he died. Um, I mean, even the principal of this school offered the lunchroom to kind of have a reception after the funeral. And um, the elementary school, they, they put a granite bench out by the flagpole. Um, the police department made a medal of honor for him. Um, high school class, I think at the class of 2019, put a sign out on the school's boulevard for him. Um, there's annual celebrations. The Egan um, American Legion is renamed after Daniel. And there are stories uh, from his comrades um, in arms. Uh, on the American Legion website. I, we just feel so blessed. I mean, uh, like, like, I don't know how it's happened, but. Mm -hmm. It's almost that I didn't even realize how much of an impact. No, and, and it just keeps going. So. And in the broader community, there are children named after him. Oh, really? From his comrades. Yes. That's, that's beautiful. <laughs> um, 
Is there any message that you would like to share with the Aiken community and other veterans here on Veterans Day? Boy, for veterans, I, I mean, I've never served. So I think of, to veterans, I, I'd want to say you, you've done hard things that I wouldn't want to do, and you've given up some years of your life and your freedom that I wouldn't want to do, and your families have had to worry about you and do without you, while well, I just pursue my little free life without giving it much thought. And the fact that I can just live my freedom without giving it much thought means the veterans have done their job well, and I'm grateful. Um, so for the community, for one thing, I'm, I'm grateful we have a community that will come out on a day like Veterans Day and do something like this. Um, but I, and I hope they continue to and encourage, encourage others that don't to do something special on Veterans Day and Memorial Day and Armed Forces Day and remember veterans, remember those serving, um, remember our new recruits, because um, they keep us having this lifestyle. We are just honored and blessed by the entire community, including the veterans. They've always been, the community has always been wonderful to us. Thank you so much for coming in and uh, being able to share your story of Daniel uh, with us here at Eakin, and we really appreciate you guys for coming in. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I'd like to take this moment to say thank you to Gwen and Wayne. <laughs> I'd like to present once again be natural, and they will now sing America the Beautiful. Oh, Thank you, Be Natural. We would now like to honor the service to our country by the men and women who are our guests today in a unique musical fashion. The Armed Forces salute that will be performed by the Egan High School Wind Ensemble under the direction 
of Mr. Brett Benson will proudly honor the branches of our armed forces. With the assistance of Mr. Randy Schaefer, the band will perform the recognized service songs of the Army, Coast Guard, Marines, Air Force, and Navy. As each selection is introduced by Mr. Schaefer, we ask that our honored guests rise for their service song. We also invite the spouses of the veterans to accompany them in this honor of each branch of our armed forces. Please be seated at the end of each branch's song. It is indeed appropriate to honor each of these branches of service with your applause. Mr. Schaefer. United States Army. United States Coast Guard. United States Marines. United States Air Force. United States Navy.
Please join me in thanking all of our branches of the United States military. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. The U.S. flag that is here on stage was given to the Egan High School Band in remembrance of Lance Corporal Daniel Olson, one of their own from the class of 2005, who died while serving his country in Iraq on April 2, 2007. Please stand as the Color Guard advances to retire colors and to remember Daniel and all veterans and their sacrifices with a moment of silence. Present. Order. Oh. Right turn. Thank you to Ms. Pareda and Mr. Castle, our trumpeteers, and thank you to everyone. This concludes our program today. Students, you will be going to your third hour class. Veterans and your families, is it, can they go back in if they, did they finish up in there? Or, oh, there's there something going on. We'll go this way, sorry. Thought I'd get you another donut and coffee. Thank you so much for being here today. Have a good day.